In everyday life we imitate the behavior of other people much more often than we tend to believe. And this happens not only when it comes to the examples that probably all of you know, like for example contagious yawning or contagious laughter. It also happens in a much more subtle way in respect to our body language or our use of words. And in this episode we will discuss under which circumstances and why we imitate other people. Whereas in the upcoming episodes we will discuss what happens if other people imitate our behavior. So what impact does it have if somebody copies or mirrors our body language, if we are scratching our face, he is scratching our face, if we cross our arms, the other person crosses her arms. If we are shaking our foot, the other person is shaking her foot. Does this have any consequences on our feelings for the other person and our behavior towards the other person? And I promise we will see a lot of surprising results. But let's first begin with this episode and the question, when and why do we imitate the behavior of other people? And as I said, let's begin with two more prominent examples like yawning and laughter. And as I said, we will begin with something you probably all know. It's the contagious effect of yawning. <sighs> you probably all experienced it once in a while that when one of your friends begins to yawn, you can't help to yawn on your own. And funny enough, this behavior is not only observed for humans, it, it was also observed for chimpanzee in a study by Campbell and colleagues published in 2009 in the journal Proceedings of the Royal Society of London Biological Sciences. The title of the study was Computer Animations Stimulate Contagious Yawning in Chimpanzees. So participants in this study were 24 chimpanzees. They were shown animations of other chimpanzees, which were either yawning or in the control condition, not yawning. And indeed it turned out when the chimpanzees saw other chimpanzees yawning, they had to yawn much more often. And to be true, when I saw the pictures, I myself had to yawn as well. So it's really infectious and the reason probably is that we all in our brains have a so-called mirror neuron system which means that as soon as another person acts in a way like like for example he or she is yawning or he or she is doing another movement it seems like that the same motor areas in our brains become activated or pre-activated even though we on our own don't do the same action. And this mirror neurons probably work especially good for yawning. From an evolutionary point of view, of course, it makes sense to have such a mirror neuron system because we can learn new movements very fast. And on the other hand, it's probably also connecting. If we imitate the behavior of other people or other monkeys, but this is something we will see in a couple of minutes. First, let's take a look at another prominent contagious phenomenon, which is laughter. You certainly know the contagious effects of laughter and I think some comedy shows on TV are especially based on laughter because sometimes the jokes are not really good, but there's always one guy or two guys who have a really contagious laughter and somehow if they are laughing, we tend to laugh as well. And the contagious effect of laughter was, for example, also observed in a study by Provine published in 1992 in the study Contagious Laughter. Laughter is a sufficient stimulus for laughs and smiles. All they did in this study was to play an 18 seconds lasting laughter from tape to the participants and then they waited what happened. And it turned out that just pure laughter made about 47% of the participants laugh on their own. 
and as laughter on its own is already funny, it's no wonder that it's often added to comedy programs because it makes a program appear more funny. And this could be shown, for example, in the study by Lawson and colleagues in 1998. In this study, 95 students were listening to the audio version of jokes from a stand-up comedian and in one condition no canned laughter was added, in a second condition canned laughter was added, in a third condition canned laughter was also added, but this time the, the participants were told that it's canned and in a fourth condition um, there was also canned laughter, but this time the participants were told, well, this is real life laughter. And it turned out that when canned laughter was added, the jokes appeared more funny, but when the participants knew that it's canned laughter, the jokes were rated less funny. <laughs>